I kept your space. I know. Laura, you deserve two chairs. One for your coffee and one for you. Giving it another 15 seconds. We were running out of yeah, so I think we should have some sort of thing. I'm not sure if I'm strong again properly. Yeah, also, I think maybe I'm sure we should have some as well. Okay, you think we have are you sure? Okay, everyone. Um, Today we're joined by Leo Panozias. He's a professor at the University of Michigan, uh, and he's going to talk to us about log corrections uh, for the entropy of ADS5 black holes, in particular, quantum aspects of black holes. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. I, I'm used to math making jokes, so <laughs> it's not going to be ADS5 black holes. So that, that's the, maybe a little bit. It's, it uh, won't show up. Okay. Okay. Good. So, so yeah, I want to I want to talk about some quantum aspects of black holes, and in concrete, concrete, concretely, I want to tell you about some corrections that that we can do, um, this logarithmic correction to the entropy of black holes. And we can compute them, and for black holes that are asymptotically anti-Sitter, uh, we can match them with some field theory expectation. That's, uh, that's essentially the talk. So. I, I figured I needed to start with something apologizing to the ETH and, and a more more realistic black hole people in the audience. So this is not I this is this is not uh, a talk that um, that can um, connect to, to that direction, but it's it's essentially a, a discussion about some matters of principle in quantum gravity. So we know we need quantum gravity to really understand black hole singularities and many many issues with black holes. So this is a little bit of some uh, developments in that direction. So very irrelevant for astrophysical black hole at the moment. Um, so the starting point, if you want to study um, quantum gravity, one, one good place to start is with, with the fact that black holes have, uh, have uh, entropy. This is something that was established in the 70s by uh, many people, including Bekenstein, who had a, a number of Gedanken experiments what happened in, in a couple of of coffee falls into a black hole, et cetera. But it was really pinned down in a work by, Ho by Hawking, the, the Hawking radiation that fixed the temperature and, and, and therefore the fact that we have an entropy that is a quarter, the area of the event horizon and all the units. So at this point, in most talks, people joke that this, this has all the right constant to be an interesting problem um, to discuss. So from the point of view of quantum gravity, the immediate question is, is can we obtain this formula as a as a degeneracy of some counting of states? So that's how that's what happens in every other situation in physics. So we can have a gas and we, we can have macroscopic properties, but we know that there's a fundamental um, explanation in terms of, of degrees of freedom, counting of degrees of freedom. So that's that's one of one one immediate problem that we have uh, if we have well, for black holes. And this, of course, was solved uh, in um, in the 90s by Andy Strom and Jeran Buffa, who computed uh, this entropy from counting of states in string theory. So this is sort of like a blueprint that we try to imitate. Now the question is, and what I want to tell you about is some developments of this conceptual question in the context of the ADS-CFT correspondence. So it's, this is roughly um, what the but the, what, what I'm going to be uh, explaining. Now, in particular, in particular, there's there's a the, the goal of the of deriving the entropy area divided by 4G as a counting, but there are other more well, other more precise countings that can be that can be performed if you believe you have a theory of quantum gravity. And one example is this logarithmic correction to the entropy. So <clears throat> 
beyond this leading piece area divided by four by four uh, four times uh, Newton's constant, there are other corrections to the entropy, and we are going to be concerned with those those corrections. Uh, corrections uh, for for theories are, are a great place to look uh, for the physics to try to to prove that you really understand the problem. And my favorite example is uh, is the hydrogen atom. So when you are in high school, sometimes they tell you the electron is like a planet that orbits around the sun, and that information is essentially sufficient to get the Bohr energy levels. But we know that if you want to to look at a spectroscopy moving between level between uh, energy levels. You really need a, a good theory, a serious theory of, of, of the atom. So this is why, um, so getting the entropy, getting the entropy uh, area divided by four is great, but you might have gotten it by some symmetry argument that has nothing to do with some underlying interest in physics that is happening, uh, taking place in your problem. However, uh, this coefficient A, the, the coefficient of the logarithmic corrections, is a coefficient that receives corrections quantum correction from massless fields in your theory. So this is a coefficient that really props the physics of your problem. What are the underlying degrees of freedoms that enter in your computation? So that's why we are interested in, in this coefficient. There are other corrections to gravity. If you think about gravity as an effective field theory, there would be higher curvature corrections. Those also can be under, understood in this context. There's this fam famous uh, Wolf entropy formula that takes care of that. So my goal is to focus on this coefficient of the logarithmic uh, contribution to the entropy. So again, in, in the, the spirit of the ADS-CFT correspondence, I'm going to compute this coefficient A using the field theory. This would be my microscopic theory of, of the black hole. And because this is, a, this is a quantity that I can compute also at low energies using just the massless degrees of freedom of the black hole, I will also compute it on gravity. And of course, I'm here because uh, this, this thing match and, and we have learned a few, a few interesting lessons from this kind of computation. In gravity, what is the source of this correction? So in gravity, massless fields in loops, they give you this correction uh, that, that, you can, that you can compute. Again, you might be concerned about doing loops in, in gravity, but I will show you in this talk that this, this particular coefficient is protected and it's very robust. Okay. Yes. So if you do have both high curvature correction and massless fields. Do you get log of world entropy in the second term? Or do you, is it still log of A? I think it's log of A. Log I of think a. it's log of world entropy, but I'm not completely sure. Okay. <clears throat> Don't think of, some people argue that you should change your definition of A or something like that? Or... Yeah, into the world entropy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So again, I, I, I want to be very specific about the claim. The claim is, is about this computation in the ADS-CFT correspondent. This is interesting to me as a matter of principle, as a matter of understanding quantum gravity uh, directly. There are, of course, some, some caveats to this computation. So as you will see, it's not a computation that we do directly in a theory of quantum gravity. We use uh, our proxy for a theory of quantum gravity is going to be some quantum field theory, so where we do the computation. So we are not dealing directly with gravitational degrees of freedom. Uh, and then this is a computation that relies heavily on, on the fact that the black hole is in anti-Sidor space and on the fact that you that we use supersymmetry. This is for supersymmetric black hole in, in anti-Sidor space only. All right, so with that disclaimer, I can I can spend this one more slide to, to explain why uh, logarithmic terms are particularly uh, an interesting way to prop quantum physics of black holes. So this coefficient, and I, I will show you this in, I hope to show you this in the start. Uh, this coefficient is, is determined macroscopically, right, from the low energy theory, uh, only from the massless particle spectrum. And it's insensitive to UV, um, to the UV completion of the theory. I will try to argue uh, for that. This is a very, very uh, key uh, ingredient in our computations. And therefore, this, this becomes a litmus test for any enumeration of quantum black hole microstates. So, if you tell me I have a microscopic theory of your black hole, I can ask you what is your coefficient, and that coefficient, whatever it is, must agree with the low energy uh, value that I can compute. So that's 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 what I mean. This was uh, very developed, well, well developed by Ashok Sen and collaborators, uh, where they study essentially all black holes in a string theory that that, that can be. Uh, whose entropy can be computed in the context of the string theory. So this is a little bit like precision uh, Stromanger-Buffer computations. 
Uh, in fact, this title of an IR Windows into UV physics I stole from one of Son's uh, Sen's famous uh, review where he shows a, a long table with all different black holes and all the corrections and how they uh, precisely match with, with, uh, with the string theory computation. All right, so it was also used to understand better the Kerr CFT correspondent by, by Andy and collaborators. And it, it has been also applied to, to compute correction to the free energy of ABGM. ABGM is a theory um, that forms part of this ADS CFT correspondence. I will give you uh, some description and by, again, Ashok Sen and other collaborators. And, and the goal is to, to perform these computations uh, for black holes. Tell you about that. All right, so I have already uh, motivated what I wanted to do and, and a little bit how I wanted to do it. So here's my outline. I want to talk, I want to show you the field theory computation. This would be like the microscopic computation of the entropy. And I'll do that on, on one example and show you that there's a, 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 an interesting universality of this result. Then I will go and, and do this computation for ADS4 black hole, ADS4 cross a seven. These are the, the black holes from the ADS CFT correspondence. <laughs> And um, so there, there's a puzzle when, when applying this computation because this computation in the context of asymptotically flat space um, has a different, a different sort of flavor that, that focuses on the near horizon degrees of freedom. And I will show you that this, is, this becomes now an issue in asymptotically ADS black holes. And I, I want to um, provide some, some, some insight into that. And, um, and then a, a computation of, of this logarithmic correction that is a little bit bottom up, right? For ABS4 black holes, but in this context of 4D, uh, N equal to gauge supergravity, just to, to understand how unique are the black holes that, that we are discussing. If I have time, I will talk about the super conformal index. So I actually, Max might have been right at, uh, <clears throat> all along. So the, this, this, the super conformal index counts uh, the entropy of ABS5 black holes. And I would like to, to, to explain how we can also compute the log corrections of ADS5 black holes, but not now using a slightly different technique. And I'll finish with some problems. All right, any questions? Sorry, but what is beyond large n mean? So good. So the 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 yeah. So n is is the number of in some field theory is the number of, of, of colors that you have in your theory. Right. And that relates to Newton's constant. So beyond large n, large n is, is, is corrections to, to the first um, term that come, that give you the, the entropy. Okay. They're like h bar. Yes, yes, yes. When h bar is not one. Mm -hmm. Newton's constant, yes. Yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll give you a, a little bit of a flavor of, of these field theory computations. I know, uh, yeah, I know this, this might not be, um, Red and butter for everybody, but I think it's, it's interesting to see what's behind uh, the, the field theory side. So this ABGM theory stands for Aharoni, Bersman, Jafferis, and Maldacena. So they study brains, uh, some M2 brains in 11 dimensional supergravity and the low energy field theory is, is given by this. So it's, it's three dimensional Chen-Simon theory. Chen-Simon theories are, uh, are very well known for to condense matter physics. So these are not exotic theories, these are very well, well understood theories in three dimensions. This one in particular has this gauge group, which is UN level K and UN level minus K. So down here is the quiver. So again, it's not necessary to understand all, all the steps, but if you're familiar, uh, great. But otherwise it's, it's a Chern-Simon theory, some three dimensional theory that has two gauge group and a bunch of matter fields that transform in specific representations. This theory is very highly superstimetric and it has a lot of global symmetry. So that's essentially a very quick summa summary of, of, of the field theory that will be due to some ADS4 black hole. Okay. So what we want to do is to use this black this field theory now. This is my UV, my microscopic theory. If I want to compute entropy, I usually a good place to start is the partition function of that theory. So these are supersymmetric theories. So rather than, than just doing trace e to the minus beta h, which is what we would do in uh, stat mac, we decorate this partition function with specific uh, and, and useful uh, terms. Like this minus one to the f will count fermions with one sign, bosons with another. So all fermions and bosons uh, 
should cancel in this computation except those that are not uh, that are not paired. And then I can decorate it further with J. Uh, J's are some global uh, generators of some flavor symmetry, some global symmetry. So this computation is, 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 if you want to do it directly by enumerating the number of degrees of freedom, it's a little hard because there are also uh, configurations that can contribute. So non perturbative co configurations like monopoles, et cetera. So one way to, to, to attack this is using uh, a path integral approach. This, this was developed uh, in 2015 by Benini and Safaroni. So instead of directly computing this partition function as an enumeration of states, you compute it as a, a path integral. So this is this is the so-called topologically twisted index. And you compute it by evaluating the partition function uh, for the theory on, on a space, S1 cross S2, it's a product space. And in this case, with some topological twist, which essentially means uh, you can you will effectively have some magnetic charge. So the technique that you use to, to compute this path integral is, is supersymmetric localization. I, I will just briefly mention that uh, for, for people who are not very familiar, so supersymmetric uh, localization allows you to compute exact, in, exact path integrals for supersymmetric theories. Um, so if, you're, if your theory is supersymmetric, so it is invariant with respect to some supercharged Q, uh, then you are, you are uh, allowed to add to, the, to your action a Q exact term. It's a little bit like a cohomology theory. It's Q uh, annihilates the action, so the action is, is symmetric, so I can add to that action a term that already contains Q because Q squared would be either zero or some symmetry that I, that I can control. So it's, it's a very innocuous uh, transformation. In fact, the whole path integral remains independent of this coefficient lambda. And that you can show, again, just algebraic by differentiating the path integral with respect to lambda set. Now, because it's independent of lambda, I can evaluate a lambda equals zero, which is what I want, the original path integral, or a lambda equals infinity. A lambda equals infinity, the theory is essentially classical, right? Because, okay, so you see lambda QB. If lambda goes to infinity, only QB equals zero can contribute. This is the localization locus. And then there could be fluctuations around that. So everything boils down to finding this locus and computing one loop determinants around it. And that is the exact, the exact uh, answer for a few theories. So this is very, this is wonderful for us because it will take this infinite dimensional path integral and usually turn it into a finite dimensional uh, matrix integral. And again, this, this might, might seem a little bit uh, exotic, but this is a, a well-known method in, in mathematics. It comes to us from symplectic geometry there, you have a symplectic form, you might have a Hamiltonian with some symmetry, and there, there you, you are interested in evaluating some, uh, some phase space integral, and this method was developed in the 80s or before for, for this kind of uh, problem. So we can borrow this, this and apply it in, in, uh, in super, for supersymmetric field theory. So reduction of, can you go back a slide? Yes. Is the reduction of the infinite uh, dimensional problem to a finite dimensional one? Because only the one loop matters? No, because only the configurations QV equals zero matter. So once you find those, that's that that it turns out to be to that depends on, on some matrix value field. And then you have to integrate over those. That's that's the key, that's the key, the key step. All right, so so for, for ABJM, so this is just very concretely. So my space is S1 cross S2. Then I need to have some background. Uh, R charge uh, field, this this cosine, and the integral, the 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 result is going to be some uh, integral over some contour. The contour comes from from the values that uh, that are not completely fixed uh, by the locus, but everything is very well well established. This has been used uh, in many situations in ads cft and uh, I'm, I'm, it's known how to apply it. In this particular case, uh, what I was what I was highlighting. Without a point. Well, what I have was I was highlighting is that the the, the integral over there is essentially has a, a contribution from the classical part, this part here, and a contribution from one loop. And for many, for all kinds of theories that we are interested, Chen Simon, uh, etc., we know the classical part, we know the one loop part. So this big this turns your problem into a Lego problem. So you need to uh, understand what are the ingredients, what are the the pieces. And put them together according to, 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 the, to these rules. So here's the answer 
uh, of, of the partition function for ABGM. I know it's a, it's a little bit of a handful, but essentially you need to find some solutions. So, so this is what beta answers, uh, 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 beta answers equation means. So you find the solutions of the beta answers equation and put them into this formula and you have your index. So let me, let me uh, explain a little bit more. So I, I showed you in the previous slide that there's a contour integral. This contour integral becomes essentially uh, integral over poles and the poles are given by these equations. So you, you need to, at the end of the day, find the solutions of this 2n by 2n um, system and, and plug, plug them in here. So let me summarize uh, because this is, this is essentially what I want to, uh, to highlight. Again, if you bear with me, this is a problem that, uh, that, in fact, I had undergrad student working on this with me. So it's not, it's not too difficult. So given some chemical potential, so here's the, the, the recipe. Given some chemical potentials, this delta A, and these are the variables. These are the holonomies in the, in the gauge groups that, that, we are, that we started with UN cross UN. There are two set of, of holonomies, U and U, U tilde. So these are what you're, look, what you're looking for. And the way to look for them is to solve this equation. This is beta answers equation. So these are some equations that are well understood in, in condensed matter and there are techniques to solve them. So we can borrow that. So yes. in, the, in the original Strom and Travalco problem where we had a, just a 2D CFT, we didn't have to do all of this saddle point extremization. So I guess, why is that showing up in this context? Uh, so in the in the context of Strom and Travalco, you have to compute your stream partition function. You can go, through some whatever technique are helping you there. Here, I need to compute the free theory partition function, and these are the techniques. Right, right. Here. Okay, so I mean, th th yeah. this is a specific to this field theory or this class of field theory. Right, right, right. So, right. but I think I think it's important again for. I think it's important that this this the technology that we need here, is not is not uh, at the level of, you know, modular space of instanton in 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 some string theory. This is. Yeah. Fairly simple field theoretic uh, problem, right? In, in some... And we're doing this all this machinery for the three D field theory because we're going to have an ADS four bar. Because we already exactly yes. exactly. So I just yeah. Okay. So so again, the important thing is that so we solve this equation, we plug in the formula that I that I showed you in the previous slide, and you have now an exact in N. And again, N is like having all non perturbative corrections and perturbative corrections in Newton's mm -hmm. constant. So this will be your quantum partition function for that, for the black hole uh, that you that you need to confirm. And okay, so once you, you do that for this particular problem, the partition function can be written. So the first term is the is the largest term. If you this is the this is your grand canonical um, thermodynamic potential. So if you compute the entropy from this, you will find that the entropy agrees precisely with the entropy of the black hole. Right. And my contribution with my collaborators here is to push this computation down to the point where we can identify this coefficient of log of n. So that's what I, what I was uh, um, promising about uh, beyond large n. So large n will be the n to a three half. And, and, and here we are also computing this coefficient of minus a half one log. So the blue is literally A over four G in some units. No, after you do your your, your, oh, okay. your transformation, you will have a a over four in the, in the yes. yeah micro -canonical. All right, so this I wouldn't <laughs> show you more detail, but this you can. This is one beautiful thing about ADSCFT that it allows you to solve usually classes of problems that have similar symmetry. So I can now perform the same computation not for ADS four on a seven, but ADS four times all this. Uh, these are examples of Sasaki Einstein seven manifolds. Whose field theory I also know is not going to be ABGN. I, I order more complicated theories. So here are some quiver diagrams from which you can read what the dual field theory is. But I have now a, a large class of examples for which, uh, for all of which, uh, I computed that the coefficient, the log coefficient, is minus a half log n. Wait, and, and so, what are the both dual? These are not ABGN. These are not ABGN. But and they're dual to. They are due to ADS4 cross this, this manifold. Oh, okay. So this is like, right, instead of having a seven, you, you can modify the this. Squash, the right, this is a little bit like from Rubin type, type compactification. If you wish, instead of a seven, you can use any Sasaki Einstein manifold. Oh, it's just a seven. 
I think if you if you form a cone over these seven folds, you have a Calabi out eight fold. That's one way of getting that stuff. That's correct. So there's the conifold, the analog of the conifold in 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 for four folds is one of these. I think, I think that's the B five two. Yeah, in 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 yeah, similar a similar thing we have in ADS five process five, right? So we can change S five by T one one and and some other uh, Calabi outs there three dimensional. But here, um, so the so this coefficient is, is seems to be universal for all the fields. All right, so now let's well, go you, finally to you, yes. You sorry. just computed it for different examples and got the same number. Yes, but is there some field theory way of understanding why it's universal? Um, so in field theory, the yeah, it's not very clear. It's not very clear why it's completely universal in field theory. Seems to depend a little bit on the sample and some some cancellation between. So when you're solving this matrix model, you have to look for the eigenvalues and the eigenvalues distribution um, are not affected by some long range. Uh, it, it, wait, there's a bulk contribution also. You don't have boundary computation. This is this is boundary computation, just boundary computation. Does it look universal from the bulk? From the bulk, yes. I'll, I'll show you why it works. I'll show you for the book right now. So is this is this a prediction of some kind of universality for 3D CFTs that we didn't know about? But I think we can know about them if we have pushed the, the matrix model computation further down. So like many, many of all these quivers have n to the three half growth. And for those, then, then there's minus... Um, Minus one half log n correction down the line. We, the the n to the three halves implies the minus to the half. I don't want to I, I I don't want to commit to that, but I I see some correlation. But you do have an example where there's it's different than this. Yes, log. there are example where okay. no, this is different. But then they have different growth, uh -huh. leading growth. Oh, like the massive type two A or similar. For example. Okay. Yeah. That's five. Uh, five is the statement that the coefficient of this term is the same in all this field? Oh, that's right. For all these theories, you oh, can explicitly okay. write the, the topological that, that twisted index, sense. expand for large n, and you will find this number. I, I yeah. So I, I've done this computation a while ago, but more recently, uh, other people have, have computed more carefully and they have found, they have found the same result. Now, the same in the asymptotically flat example. We had all kinds of different coefficients there, depending on what the is looking at. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. question. Oscar, would you like to ask it yourself? Uh, okay. I'll ask. Uh, is the law correction known in the ADS or CFT3 for analysis? Okay. Yes, it is known. All right, but let, let me. Well, okay, I, I can. I can. Yeah, no, I have. I, I wrote a paper on that. And I, I'm happy to, to, to elaborate, but it's not. Yeah, it's not something that I can immediately. So let me go to the gravity side. In the gravity side, we will see, hopefully, it will be some. It will be clearer. So, so the gravity dual, uh, as I mentioned, is on n n two brains. They prop the singularity C4 mod k, kind of the. Sort of that, that was alluded to before. And um, so the index computed for ABGN, the, the, the field theory computation, uh, is, is the, was the topological twist with fluxes on S2. So it will correspond to a, an ADS4 black hole with magnetic charges. The magnetic charges will correspond to the, to the global symmetries uh, that we have for on S, S7. OK, so, so the. Yeah, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm I'm switching a little bit, but but this is simpler to write it like this in the four-dimensional language. So we should think about this as an eleven-dimensional theory, of course, ADS four cross seven. But uh, in the four-dimensional language, this is some some equal to gauge supergravity. Here's the metric. You can see uh, that it looks like uh, like a charge right in Nostrum uh, black hole. Here, the magnetic charges, the magnetic charges um, connect. With, with the fluxes that I had in, in the previous computation, and that's that's the background, right? 
zero electric charges, but there are scalars. There are scalars, yes. There are uh, for for a scalar from the for morphic sections, etc. All that is is there. But I okay, good. So the entropy of this black hole is is precisely uh, the area divided by four. And if you compute it, it's these very complicated functions of the fluxes. Uh, but it's it's well known. And this is the function that matches with the grand canonical potential after you change the ensemble. So it's a, this is a, quite impressive. Uh, this was done by Benini, Christophe, and Seferoni. Uh, so this is precisely what I, what I was saying. So you take the topologically twisted index um, and you extremize with respect to the, to the fugacities and then um, that, that provides this entropy of the black hole. So my goal is now to compute one look corrections around this black hole and see if they give me this minus half log n. So let's let's discuss that. So I have a, a, some background, and I'm looking for fluctuations, more fluctuations around that background. Um, so that turns the problem of integrating over the fluctuations into a problem of of computing determinants. So one way to 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 talk about determinants in this context of of curved spaces is to first define them, take take out any zero eigenvalue, define. The log of the determinant as sum of log of, of the eigenvalues. Uh, and then it is convenient to use this Hill kernel approach. Again, this is uh, particularly useful for, for kept space uh, computations. All right, so now the Hill kernel has some advantages and disadvantages. So one, one issue is that it contains both the zero modes and non-zero modes. So when you with, because what we want to compute is the determinant without zero modes, you need to subtract them from, from the Hill kernel. All right. And, uh, and the other important fact that we're going to use is that the heat kernel itself ad admits a silly de Witt expansion for a small tau, right? So, so a silly de Witt expansion is precisely what is written down here. So for n equals zero to infinity, I have this large sum uh, in powers of tau with some coefficients. So to give you some idea of what these coefficients are, the, the n equals zero term, if I put n equals zero here, I have tau to the minus two minus d over two. And this is essentially computing some Gaussian integral when my eigenvalues look like flat space eigenvalues. So I'll give you an idea that the heat kernel essentially is doing is construct is computing this determinant as an expansion around flat space. And all these coefficients a n, they have very they have some important physical meaning, and uh, but they can be constructed as a combination of, of the Riemann tensor. No so that's that's um, what enters in the what computer. specifically is is the differential operator a here so a here is some generic so this is or, very generic i guess in this in the but it is some okay. kinetic kinetic operator yeah all right so so here's the here's again the the key part uh of that, that i i advertise that this coefficient is very important because it's robust because it doesn't it can be computed only using the the massless degrees of freedom. So let's see that in a formula because that, that I think is useful. So I already stated that the heat kernel can be expanded in this uh, silly the width, I miss the silly the width expansion. Now it is important that um, because tau times kappa, kappa are the eigenvalues, is dimensionless. It is more natural to think about some tau bar that will, that will and because the eigenvalues of the Laplace operator or Dirac square would be uh, the length of the space to the minus two. It's good to, to rescale to have one dimensionless quantity like that. And now in this very complicated sum that I might not be able to evaluate, I see that there's only one term that can give me log of, of, of L. And this is the one in which N equals D over two. All other terms will give me something else, but no logs. The log comes from only one term, the, the ones that have a, a N equals D over two. And this is, Really, so then I have the log, and you see I can change my, my cutoff scale, but that cannot affect the coefficient. So this is why this is a very robust uh, quantity to look at, because again, I can, I might not know exactly where the cutoff scale is for my gravity theory, what the UV uh, I need to include, but this coefficient is not affected by that, uh, but that lack of knowledge. Is All right. this the heat kernel in the throat or in the full area? This is the whole full geometry. Yeah, yeah. Very, 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 very important question, yes. And then on general grounds, different morphism invariance, et cetera, if I am in an odd dimensional space, like 11 dimensional supergravity, these coefficients vanish, the bulk coefficient vanish. So that's, that's the bulk coefficient vanish. So my only contributions 
Um, so again, I, I argue about robustness in, in all dimensions, this coefficient vanishes. So my only contribution will come uh, from zero modes that can, that can uh, that are there in the solution. All this, this, this part is, is completely zero. And then of course I have to look for zero modes separately and, and include them in the path integral problem. All right, so, so again, just a summary, in, in, because I'm interested in an 11 dimensional supergravity, my fields, low energy fields have the graviton, the gravitino and the three form field. I need to compute, uh, understand the zero modes that, that can contribute there and then include ghost contribution if needed. Uh, so this formula here essentially says, uh, minus one is just to subtract the zero mode because the heat kernel included them. Uh, and then B beta is, is, a, is a number that tells you how they enter in the path integral. And then of course, if there are goals, I need to treat the goals separately. All right, so, so what are the possible zero modes that I have in this ADS4 cross a seven black hole? So overall, uh, let's let's focus on the on the three form, right? So the the three there's so first of all, asymptotically ADS four black holes are made to form zero mode. So this is a result of Camporesi and Higuchi. In fact, yeah. So ADS four already I I know I have a, a two form zero mode. The three form zero mode naively will not contribute, but to quantize the three form zero modes, I need uh, two form goals that are Grassmann and three form. Uh, three one form goals that are gross, uh, Grassmann and four scalar goals. So this is actually for, uh, named by Siegel goals of goals. So here's more or less the idea. So I want to, I have some, uh, I, I have some gauge symmetry that I want to, to, to fix in a form that is in a P form. And that will depend in a P minus one form. Therefore, if I want to really do my, my whole path integral, I have to go down and fix the gauge invariance in this P minus one and so on and so forth. And that's what I will get this sort of change of, of goals. So that's 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 the idea. And all now, of the ghosts contribute to the log? Is all the logs, all the ghosts, right. if they if they are zero modes, right? So yeah, right. so in particular, uh, the, the three form itself cannot have zero modes uh, because there's no one form zero modes on a seven, for example. But, uh, but the, the two form zero mode uh, that I need to, to, quantize, uh, to quantize C3, the ghosts, will have contribution. And this is really the, the hero of this story. There's a two form zero mode in asymptotically ADS4 spaces. And that's the one main contribution to the path in, to the partition function or the path integral in 11 dimensional gauge supergravity. Can, can I recast this as a purely 4D problem by doing collusive line or? That you can do at your own peril. So that, that can be dangerous. Uh, in fact, yeah, so as, as I was explaining, and I, I will try to show you, I, I, if I have time, uh, I can show you things you can do directly in 4D, but, but it's not much, it's not much. All right, so we have to compute this, uh, the contribution of this goes uh, to the one loop effective action. Um, so we need to, there, there's essentially, we need to compute two, two things, how many two form zero modes I have and how they enter in the path integral. So this beta tells me how they scale, how they change the scale in the path integral and then zero, how many I have, and that's it. Um, okay, so this is a little bit uh, jumbled, but essentially uh, this argument is in one of a sense review. So if you have a two form uh, that is a zero mode, you need to normalize it, once you normalize it, you see that uh, the beta, the way that they enter in the path integral, beta in this case is seven half, all right? Now, the N2, the number of two form zero modes uh, is essentially the Euler, the Euler number of the, of the horizon. And at this point, I want to introduce a, a small, a slight generalization. So in gauge supergravity, uh, black holes can have uh, not just a spherical horizon. So in gauge supergravity, this uh, famous Penrose, um, uh, theorem about horizons needing to be spherical is, is simply not true. Uh, so you can have any kind of uh, uh, Riemann surface being the horizon. So I can do my computation because I also know how many two form zero modes I have in this case. I can adjust my computation to accommodate engaged supergravity all black holes that can have different horizons, not just a spherical horizon. Spherical horizon would be G equals zero. But other than that, I have a, a more general expression. 
All right, so then I put this, I can compute the entropy through um, the one loop effective action. And when I, the only the only new ingredient that I need is, is an, an entry from the ADS-CFT dictionary that tells me that L scales as one over uh, N to the one six. And I plot that uh, in my expression from the entropy and I get precisely this contribution. So this is a gravity a gravity computation, low energy. I just use supergravity and one property, a few properties of the um, heat kernel to arrive at this. And the only the, the, the only field that contributed, there were no bulk field contributing because I'm in 11 dimension. There was one to form zero mode uh, that exists in, in asymptotically ADS4 black holes and that's the contribution uh, to this computation. And, and it perfectly agrees uh, with with what I show you in field theory. So, so then the, the reason why in the other examples you get the same factor is because I replaced S7. Okay, so uh, that, that I will oh, do in energy. the next slide. Oh, sorry. So, good. Uh, so, so how about this whole large class of manifolds or, or ADS-CFT pairs? Do they also work? So they work by, by the following sort of theorem. So as I explained, I, I have black holes. In, so these black holes are, are there, but they, there's no explicit metric. There, there's no explicit construction but uh, we expect that they are there. Uh, so, but, but the, the solution ADS4 times Kasaki Einstein 7 is, is a type of front robbing uh, compactification, if you wish, and it preserves the right amount of supersymmetry for um, spaces, seven dimensional spaces that are of the Sasaki Einstein type. And we know explicitly this list here. Now, um, my whole counting could have been completely spoiled if these manifolds have some other properties, but Luckily, there's this um, uh, theorem. So every, every seven-dimensional compact Einstein manifold of positive curvature has vanishing uh, first betty number. That tells me the number of one form zero modes that I can have. So I can have uh, basically no uh, one form zero modes. So there's nothing that I need to correct uh, my computation. Everything comes from ADS. These two form zero modes in ADS. So for all these manifolds, there's there's nothing I need to do, and um, and I get uh, agreement for the whole class. So I want to um, I want to briefly maybe flash a couple of slides. So this can be extended to another kinds of ADS4 black holes. This they come from M5 brains, and these are uh, M5 brains that they they wrap um, a three dimensional hyperbolic manifold. So they have a lot more structure, and the the partition function of this uh, of you know, on the field theory. There are some techniques called 3D, 3D correspondence that allows you to compute the partition function. I will not bore you with, with more partition functions, but here's the answer for this kind of partition functions. So you have an M5 brain wrapped on a hyperbolic three manifold. It can now have first a, a Betty number non-zero, and it, it, they, this is how they uh, change the, the quantum. On the gravity side, I already show you that the two form contributes um, with the first line, the fact that I, I now have non-zero Betty number allows for the three form also to contribute because it would be the two form times this one form. And they, you compute this, this coefficient, B3, remember minus one is to subtract, B3 tells you how they enter in the path integral, and here's the answer, and when you check it, it also agrees. So we have now two different classes of ADS4 black holes in ADS-CFT for which we can compare the one loop correction or the, the logarithmic correction to the entropy on the gravity side and on the field theory side, and they completely agree. Um, so now I want to, probably in the last few minutes, I want to talk a little bit about some, uh, some puzzles that this kind of computation helps address. Uh, so there was a question about uh, whether this computation was in the near horizon or in the, or in the full space time. Um, and again, so, so let, me, let me go through, through this point. So the classical entropy function that, that sent and others uh, constructed is the part that takes care of higher curvature correction to the entropy. All right. um, and that has been recently revisited, so it works very nicely. Now, the quantum entropy formula, the, the set of instructions that tell you how to compute this lot in black holes that were asymptotically flat, uh, usually uh, requires that you go to to the near horizon region. In this case, for this axon right in the nostrum black hole, with Bunch of charges, but it would be ADS2 cross S2 or ADS2 times some Riemann surface. Um, now, the, the, to reproduce the field theory computation, we needed the full ADS4 
a solution in particular these two to form zero modes they are um they are they are in the ads4 region so if you were to do the computation following sense uh prescription just the near horizon in the near horizon limit these black holes are ads2 cross m m9 and m9 is some s2 bundle over s7 and it's characterized by these charge numbers that that i the chart here, the magnetic charges so for that one you you now can do the the, the counting i will not uh discuss all the all the, all the details but they are here so they, they are graviton zero modes because in ads2 you have graviton zero modes uh, of two type of, of two types. So there are one that come from ADS2, and there are one that come from killing vectors in M9. In M9, there was some isometries, so they, they contribute as uh, to the graviton in, in, in this computation. Then there's one form zero modes, ADS2 admits one form zero modes. The theorem of Camporesi Higuchi tells me, I remind you again, for ADS2M, there's always a M form zero mode. So for ADS2, there's a one form, ADS4, there was two form, and Odd dimensional ADS don't, don't have this kind of zero modes. And now we can essentially follow, um, do the computation. And here you can see all the contribution from the graviton, gravitino, the three form and one form. And that gives you a number, like minus two log n, that does not agree with field theory. And now, okay, I did not make a mistake in this computation because some students of SEM did the computation at the same time and we get the same number, <laughs> but it does not agree with, uh, with what the field theory says. Um, so that that implies that that in the context of asymptotically ADS black hole, one needs to be more careful about different degrees of freedom that are not living uh, necessarily near the throat. So in fact, um, there are other situations in ADS CFT, especially ADS condensed matter, where you you need this this sort of uh, hair in ADS to to, to get interesting things. So that's uh, that's that part. Um, so I can, so I, I will now, I want to maybe finish with um, some discussion of, of what happens if I try to tackle the problem directly in four dimension. If I, if I didn't know that black hole, that these particular black holes are embedded in 11 dimensional supergravity and I went just, uh, I went just an, ahead and, and do the computation for this black hole. Um, the coefficient again, the coefficient of, of the log will be given by, by this expression. So C, and, and it has some local contribution and some global contribution. Now, it is not, now all these coefficients A are non, are non zero. So in fact, I need to know what A, A, A4 is. So in this, uh, the four silly the width coefficient, this A4 can be um, best represented in this, uh, in this basis. So these are some combination of curvature invariants that are convenient. And um, what we what we did uh, with uh, my collaborators, uh, Marina Marina David, uh, Victor Godet, uh, Xin Han Liu, was to to go uh, carefully through all the fields that can that can that can be in uh, in the black hole in this four dimensional black hole and compute the contribution um, to the to the fourth silly the width coefficient. So this this table itself might not be very interesting, but one thing that we can do is to compute if I have some right in the black hole, uh, I can go back to the question of whether the full geometry or the near horizon geometry uh, are, are giving different results. And what we find is that as far as the local contribution is concerned, the, the, diff, so far, the, the, the local contribution, the, the one that comes from the, the silly, the width coefficient, it is the same, it agrees whether I do it in the full geometry or in the near horizon geometry. So the main difference at the end only comes uh, from, from the global part, which are essentially um, zero modes. So, so I think I also, this, this also clarifies some, some issues about uh, whether this kind of contribution can be topological or not. It is clear that in ADS they are not topological and, and there's a still a big gap between connecting this ADS4 computation with the 11 dimensional computation, but I think um, that, 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 that might not be uh, so straightforward. There's there being a, a particularly also from here, some computation and some discussion about uh, corrections to this computation to the, that, that can come um, corrections in lot of the temperature. 
And um, so I, for the black holes that I discussed, all these black holes are, are supersymmetric and, and thanks to Martin collaborators, we know that the, 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 the physics that come from the JT gravity that is related to this black hole does not have any log T contribution. So for this, uh, for this particular black holes, we are not uh, real safe, but I think it's still an interesting question of, of understanding uh, the difference to, to quantum contributions when you are focusing on the near horizon geometry or in the or in the field geometry. So, so I will not. I guess I yeah. I will not. I will not talk about the ADS five black hole. I will just summarize uh, what, what I have done. Uh, so so log correction for magnetically charged ADS four CFT three uh, quiver pairs. So we. We have shown you that there's agreement for all this, I would call this M2 black holes in ADS4. I have also shown you that uh, using this 3D, 3D correspondence, I can also um, match the logarithmic corrections to black holes uh, that come from wrapping M5 brains on hyperbolic three manifolds. The bottom up approach to logarithmic corrections uh, teaches us that there, there are part of this contribution that are really independent of whether you compute near the horizon uh, or in the full geometry for ADS black hole. So that, that actually was a surprise to us. And that the main difference that we are seeing is the difference that come from the from zero modes and global contribution, not from uh, this local contribution. And I, I did not explain, but I for rotating ADS5 black holes, I cannot do the, field, the gravity computation. I have done the field theory computation. I know what to expect. And I have uh, I can uh, I can apply Kerr CFT extending a little bit Kerr CFT and also reproduce the the log correction for ADS five black holes. ADS five black holes are of course safer because they don't have zero modes. So all the counting uh, all the counting uh, should be even nicer in, in the near horizon and, and and far away from the horizon. So that's uh, but okay that you have to take on my word because I, I didn't I didn't. Uh, Show you in full detail, but I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, anyone who might be interested. So uh, my outlook is again: we we are learning some lessons for ADS4. How ADS4 is really very different from ADS5 uh, black hole. Um, the zero modes play a, a very important role in, in these computations. They completely determine these log corrections. This is not true if you start in some sort of bottom-up approach. So the degrees of freedom do not live uh, locally at the at the horizon. That's uh, certainly not for this ADS4 black hole. So that requires uh, interpreting sense entropy formula in the presence of some hair that is intrinsic to ADS. Um, all right. So there are some open questions, of course. So one question that uh, people in the field have been uh, discussing for a while now is is a direct type to be computation of of log n for the ADS5 black hole. So so 10 dimensions, of course, has many local contributions, and, and that is really the main stumbling block, but I think it's a, it's a worth uh, problem to discuss. Um, again, because I did not talk about ADS5, uh, but there's some interesting questions about, so far you can just use Kerr CFT to get also a lot of correction to the ADS5 black hole, but it would be nice to, to connect uh, more directly the, the two sides, the field theory, the CFT2, that you use to do the computation with some higher dimensional CFT. So that's that's one of the interesting questions for me, at least. Um, so the entropy that I have been talking about here is, a, is a, a statistical mechanical entropy. I just have some configurations, I count, I give you my partition function and, and that. So there's a still a gap between modern interpretation of entropy as entanglement, more quantum information theoretic. And I think that would be really nice to, to fill that gap to connect. Uh, this computation, very precise computations in field theory that we can do with this more conceptual understanding of the black hole entropy as a quantum information theoretic uh, object. Um, so it is- In, the, in that context, yes. do, yeah. I, do I think of the, the log correction as being something like a generalized entropy because it's entropy coming from matter fields in the bulk or- Probably, probably, but but my goal my goal was to redefine the object that you're computing. Instead of computing yeah. this partition function, maybe we need to 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 create some some other object to compute. That's that's what I I think is really needed here. So everything that I said uh, from the very beginning is is very reliable on on having supersymmetry, 
and it would be really nice to have a slightly non super symmetric result. So, so in that direction, uh, um, so one could one could think of uh, in in the case of any of the ADS five black hole and n equal four super young mills to reduce the theory and have some sort of generalization of SYK and try to formulate questions there. So this is something I'm and I've been working for a long time with Matt and, and Joaquin, but uh, but we hope that this is a way to to break these bonds of supersymmetry and try to go into some more interesting physics uh, around black hole horizons. And, and of course, uh, I think um, I try to argue that the precision holography uh, is very powerful and it's, it's showing you a lot of resolution, but it's important to take that uh, to, to confront really some puzzles with black hole. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, are there any further questions? We already had a number of questions. Uh, out of curiosity, what was the problem with the finding black hole solutions in that Sasaki Einstein case? Is not enough symmetry or something? Or... Yeah, so yeah, people have tried uh, different different things, but um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's less symmetric, of course, it's, it's a lot less symmetric. And, um, and most of the time in the literature, what people do is they well, typically, and this has been very useful, of course, for ADS5, for example. So you reduce some sector of type 2b, some, some truncation to, to five-dimensional theory, and there you solve. But then normally that, that does not accommodate for much more complicated manifolds. So that, that's one technical issue. But I think, yeah, the question is technical. Wait, sorry. So if I have an explicit Einstein metric from one of these Sasaki Einsteins, then what's the obstruction or defining the black hole solution? Yeah. Oh, so you're saying it's just, it's not, the metrics are not known. The metrics are not known. For the Sasaki Einstein. For the Sasaki Einstein, for some Sasaki Einstein, the metric are known. Yeah, yes, I are known okay. very well. But the black hole in that metric is not known. So as I said, the, the, the front Rubin compatibilization is completely known. But putting a black hole in this geometry is not known. But if you ever do it, we already know what the entropy is going to be. You computed the entropy of a black hole that hasn't been found yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, are there other questions? Okay. All right. Let's uh, thank the speaker again. <laughs> I think it's going to take five minutes to talk about ADS-5. Uh, let's maybe...